The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson is the first of the Stormlight Archive. It is an epic sci uh, fantasy novel that I, uh, very daunting. Um, I did own it, but I don't read anymore, so I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks now. So it has a very honking large 45-hour um, audiobook, but I, you know, I still took it down in 10 days. Uh, so this uh, is a really large in scope story focusing on three characters mainly. We have uh, Kaladin who is a very young man. He's only 19, but he's a master spearman, but he's also a slave and we're sort of exploring uh, and through flashbacks we get uh, you know who, what he's all about and his current situation and where he's going. He's probably one of the more uh, magnetic characters up there because of his strong character work. And um, he gets a really interesting arc. And then the other two characters we're following, there's uh, Shalon. She is a woman who's a scholar of sorts who wants to steal a soul caster, which is basically like an alchemy device uh, from, from a woman. She's the sister of, the, of one of the kings of the kingdoms. There's, there's several. But she's sort of undercover and trying to get uh, become the ward of a, another scholar um, and steal her basically that alchemy device so she can save her family from financial ruin. And then thirdly, we have Dalinar. He is the um, brother of that lady, the scholar, uh, and he is a, a high prince. And he's uh, trying. He, he's plagued by visions of the past. He keeps having these seizure-like moments, and then, and he's not sure what to do. Everyone keeps talking about him behind his back. There's a lot of politics in uh, being a high prince. A lot of danger, but uh, mainly the main focus of the conflict is shards. Shard plates uh, are basically like these large, giant suits of armor that uh, are, in, are encrusted with gems on the inside and you can use stormlight. Stormlight sort of like the, uh, uh, it's, a, it's like a mystical force that allows you to become stronger, faster, uh, more focused. Uh, you can let it out of your body and shard armor, basically shard plate lets you, you know, basically be an unkillable stopping machine, uh, unkillable fighting machine on the battlefield. So that and shard blades, which are, our deadly weapon. So that's sort of the main struggle of everyone's after. There's many magic systems in this uh, book. It's a lot of uh, characters. There's the main three, but there's a lot of lesser ones. Um, it's a very epic in scope. You know, I, I didn't have trouble following all of them, but sometimes the the book seems a little indulgent. Sometimes they introduce like small characters that don't really push the, the thing forward. And these interludes, like you know, like a fisherman guy. And it doesn't really have any bearing on the story. There's no payoff for them. There might be payoff later, but there's just a lot of like stuff going on. There's magic systems. There's um, gems. People use gems for currency, but you can also like hang them up and put stormlight into them for lighting. Uh, the gems can also go in armor, but you can also wear them and use them. There are people that can use the um, the power of the the stormlight in gems. And then there's like the armor. Then there's also the swords. Um, there's all this rich history about uh, the Radiance and the Voidbringers or like the destructive forces from the past that sort of split the world up. Um, there's different cultures, there's different uh, hierarchies in these different cultures uh, because uh, the main kingdom is the, uh, the, the Lethi people uh, live in the uh, kingdom of Alethkar and they're at war with the Parshendi because of uh, assassination that takes place at the beginning of the book. There's also interludes in, involving that uh, assassin as well. And um, yeah, the book is really like uh, big in scope, a little bit uh, intimidating at first, but uh, I thought it was okay. It wasn't like particularly super amazing. Uh, the main reason being because um, you do get some payoff, but you can definitely tell they're holding back on stuff, but it's also like a thousand page book. So I was expecting a little bit more stuff going on, but it, it basically just, sends all of the characters into one climax each, uh, some emotional, some physical. But overall, uh, it still had my attention. I didn't want to like turn it off and um, I already have the second one, an audio book from the library. So uh, I think I'll continue reading until like uh, that turns me off. But uh, you know, it's a pretty hard task to create a thousand page book that can keep uh, someone's attention. So um, 
I definitely uh, didn't love it, but I enjoyed it and I'll continue with the series. So I give um, The Way of Kings a 4 out of 5.